Hi, my, my name is Matthias Quackenbush. Thanks for tuning in today. So today, as on most days, I would like to talk with you about Honeywell International Incorporated. If you check out our website, badhoneywell.org, the original inspiration for our campaign to boycott and invest Honeywell will be abundantly clear to you. We actually have a video right on our front page. Um, check it out. It's a YouTube video Honeywell put up. It's, uh, it shows their um, TPE331 engine. And just take a look at this. I'm going to play it. All right, so. You can see it's an official Honeywell video. And that is a Reaper drone, also known as the Predator B. And inside, you can see the TPE331 engine. That's a Honeywell product. Um, they're doing the 360 view and zooming back out. And off the Reaper drone goes. Off to engage in some extrajudicial killing, no doubt. And that gets to the heart of why this matters. Because, sure, Honeywell makes a TPE331 engine for the Reaper drone. So what? Well, so, if you look at the website of the Bureau of Mess if Sorry, Bureau of Investigative Journalism, or if you look at the Stanford Law School report Living Under Drones, you'll find that this Reaper drone, powered by a Honeywell engine, also guided by Honeywell navigational equipment, is responsible for the um, for terrorizing communities in Pakistan and Yemen, and up to uh, 4,000 civilian casualties. There's some uh, indiscriminate killing going on, extrajudicial indiscriminate killing that violates international law. The U.S. is perpetrating it and has been, um, especially since the Obama administration began, and Honeywell is deeply complicit in that. In fact, if you look at a Honeywell press release, which I've got right here on the website, I'm not going to show it to you right now, but you can check it out. Um, Honeywell has a contract for this TPE-331 for about $400 million. That's not even the half of it. Because um, so, speaking of indiscriminate killing, it's not just U.S. drones. If you check out our website, again, there's an area called Honeywell is also involved in, I'll show that to you really quick, just to give you a sense of what's on there. And it's a list of all kinds of nefarious things that Honeywell's involved in. Pretty much everything you can imagine a big corporation being involved in, Honeywell's there. Nuclear weapons, fracking, Canadian tar sands, advocating for the Keystone XL pipeline, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, Fix the Debt, which is a corporate front group to cut uh, Social Security and Medicaid um, and while preserving corporate tax, tax breaks. Um, they're responsible for a whole list of environmental contamination incidents all around the country. But most relevant to current events, I would say, although there's a lot going on in current events and a lot of it's pretty relevant to our lives, but most relevant to what you might have been hearing about in the news is Honeywell's involvement in Israeli weapons. <laughs> um, yeah, and so Honeywell's actually really an equal opportunity war profiteer because uh, in 2012 they signed a contract with the Israeli military worth... Um, $735 million. That's like three quarters of a billion. This was to supply F1, F-124 engines for a training fleet of M346 jets. I know much about aircraft propulsion, but I do know that this is a very versatile jet from what I've read, and it was most likely the, the training aircraft used to train those who are now engaging bombing campaigns over Gaza, the most densely populated region in the world, that have killed, I think to date, 1,900 people, the vast majority civilians, and at least 400 of them children. So like I said, Honeywell seems perfectly happy to profit from the indiscriminate slaughter of civilians, no matter who's the perpetrator. And just as Israel has a long, proud history of indiscriminate slaughter in Gaza, Honeywell has a long, proud history of profiting from that slaughter. I'm not going to go into all the historical details, but for example, um, in two, June 2010, the Freedom Flotilla, when 10 peaceful activists were killed trying to transport humanitarian aid, the, the, the boat that fired on those activists was armed with Honeywell torpedoes. That's just one example. I mean, they go back to all the different past campaigns in Gaza. Um, they've, they've made billions. Well, the really absurd thing, and you actually, sorry, you can see this all documented on the website of the Coalition to Oppose the Arms Trade. It's a Canadian site. It's really good. We have a link to them on our page. They've got a whole page for Honeywell that goes through all the uh, military contracts they've had and um, cooperation with Israeli military state-owned military um, contractors as well. It's an extensive list, so I would peruse that at your leisure. So what you don't see... So, um... Excuse me. The really absurd thing about all this, though, is that we, the American taxpayers, are giving Israel about $3.5 billion in military aid every year. That's billion with a B. Now, since, since our politicians uh, don't seem willing to stand up to the uh, wealthy... to the lobbyists and wealthy interest groups that are making this possible, whether they're um, lobbying for Israel or for military contractors like Honeywell, 
Doesn't seem like we have much choice in whether our tax dollars go to support indiscriminate slaughter or not. What we do have a choice in is whether our consumer dollars go to support that. And that's really the rationale behind our, our boycott campaign and the bad Honeywell campaign at large. We can make Honeywell pay very literally for their complicity in war crimes and human rights violations. Again, our website, badhoneywell.org, that's for boycott and divest Honeywell, will give you some guidance about how to get started with that. You should definitely check us out on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Bad Honeywell, and also follow our campaign with the Boycott app. Just look it up, it's great. Most importantly though, stay tuned for the next video. Thanks.